Welcome to the era of AI. Well, hello and welcome. In this lecture, I'm going to explain to you how to navigate the CapCut interface because we need to explain it in detail. And we're going to start with the first element, which is the import feature inside of CapCut. So without further ado, let's go and explain that. So the import feature inside of CapCut is this feature that you can see right over here, which can allow you to import pretty much anything you would like to import video, image, audio, sound effect, any kind of thing you want. So let me go ahead, for example, and click on the import option right here. So I have this particular trailer that I created not too long ago, uh, and it's for one of the courses that I own. And here I can go ahead and import a video, right? So this is what we call a B-roll. So if I add the B-roll, you'll be able to see the B-roll right over there. That's a video. And one thing is I can click right over here, and I can import something else. So for example, I can go ahead and import the audio that goes along with that video. This is an audio. I'm gonna teach you how you can generate audios using AI in a couple of minutes, uh, of course, in deep inside the course. And I can also upload other things such as a sound effect. So for instance, here we have this particular cash register sound effect. And the thing is, I can drag these. So this is the video and I want you to pay very careful attention. So this is the video. If I were to drag this video, it will automatically take place in the cover. The cover is the first layer of B roll. Here you can notice that at any point in time, you can actually mute. So if you'd like to mute this video, you can mute it by clicking on mute. And now even if I play it, all, I mean, it already doesn't have an audio. But if it has an audio and you want to mute the audio, just click on mute right over there and you can mute the audio. You can unmute. If you don't want this to appear in the editing, you can click here on this and this will become invisible, right? So the track will hide, it will be hidden. Now you can move the track along here easily and you can actually even move it to the top if that's what you want. And you notice that when we moved it to the top, automatically it has created another, another B-roll. And here I can also mute the track. I can also lock the track. I can also hide the track. I can do all these things. I can undo them like this. And I can also go back in time. So you can go back in time by using this particular undo element right here, which if I just click on like this, it will start to undo the things that I did in the past. So you can see it's like coming back in time right? Okay. And one other thing is that when I move this in the cover, notice that it's going to snap back like that. Even if I move it here in the cover, as long as I'm in the cover, it's going to snap. But if I move it right here on, on top of the cover, I can move it whatever I want and it doesn't snap. It only snaps here at the cover. And that is because right over here, I basically have enabled this particular snap magnet. If I disable it, now I can move this wherever I want. And as you can see, it didn't snap back. But if I, as, as, as long as I activate the magnet, it will snap right back in, okay? These other elements are also important, but they're not going to be necessary for you. Now, I'm gonna explain only one of them, which is the axis. So for instance, notice that here I have this axis as long as I'm hovering, I'm not clicking, but I'm just hovering, hovering, hovering. And you can see I have that, that axis over there. And whenever I, whenever I want to put my, this particular axis, I can just click and it will move it, but it will not move it past the length of the scene. So if the scene is this long, it will not be able to actually move it to more than that. So it will just limit it to the length, okay? And if I were to move the scene here, it will snap back. If I were to turn off the magnet, I can move the scene wherever I want and it doesn't snap back. And now I can move my cursor right here because now the scene ends here. I hope you get the point. Now, if I turn the magnet, you can see that that moves with it. If I go back in time, it will come back over here and I can put the magnet, I can put the, the axes there. And as, as long, as soon as I turn off the, on the magnet, you will see that it will basically come back over there. Now, one other thing here is that you can always zoom to fit the timeline, which is going to help you out to see more details about your project. You can always zoom in extra detail 
which means that you're going to start seeing frame by frame, image by image, because a video, I have to tell you, a video is nothing more than images attached to each other's image after an image after an image, because all a camera does is it takes pictures in a speed. We call it the frames per second. And so basically a camera can take a video for up to 60 frames per second, which means that it can take up to 60 images per second. All right. That's what frames mean means. And so all the camera does is it takes a picture and another picture and another picture and another picture, and it just loops them, right? It just loops them and creates a scene. All right. Which then shows as a video. It's, it's nothing, basically it's nothing more than a camera, right? A camera that takes videos or that takes images and creates a video based on those images because it takes a lot of frames and it seems like it is in real time, but it's not really It's just taking photos and looping all of them together. I can move my cursor and you can see that the scene is moving accordingly. Now this is a pre-edited scene, which means that I added some effects to it, which I can show you how to do. And of course, like I said, you can zoom in, zoom out if you'd like to see more. Other interesting things about uh, CapCut is that you can add voiceover. So let me show you. If I were to drag this particular voiceover, the voice or the audio will immediately drag underneath the cover. I'd like to repeat, when you drag the voiceover right here, even if you put it here, it will automatically take its place underneath the cover, underneath the cover. And as you can see, that's the audio right over here. So you can see now we have a voiceover. The video obviously doesn't have a voice. And if we want to listen, let's listen. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this into fortunes? making countless sales from creations that customers love. Okay, so you can see that not only have we now have a, we have a scene, but we also have a scene with an, an audio. And by the way, this voiceover, you can always click here to hide or to mute the track. If I play it right now, because the audio is no longer there, it will mute it. The sales from creation. Now I can unmute it. And by the way, another thing you need to know about B-roll or video assets is that if a video asset has sound, it is practical to always right click on the video and there is a button here which is extract audio from video which i can show you and that would lead us to import another scene that has an audio to it so for instance i can go right here and i can just take one of the scenes like this this scene has an audio to it it's 15 seconds if i drag this number one i have to explain to you is that notice what's going to happen the scene that's shown right now is not the scene below. It's not the scene on the cover. It's the scene that's on top of it. So you can see that the scene that we see is the scene on top, not the below. And from here, because the scene starts from here, if you play the cursor from here to here, you will see the scene underneath. But as, as soon as you start playing, as soon as the other scene starts, it will take over priority and it will show first. So this should, should tell you that the scenes that play are the scenes that are at the top. All right. So I hope that you get that. This scene obviously has a voiceover to it. I know that it has an audio. If I cl right click on that scene, I can, I have a lot of options here, right? So I can copy, cut, delete it. I can split the scene. I can edit it. I can remove filler words. I can create a compound clip. I can do vocal isolation in case there is music in that scene and I would like to remove the music from it and only keep vocal. I can also deactivate it if I want to. I can extract the audio or replace or range or render. If I click on extract the audio, notice what's going to happen. The audio will be extracted from that scene and it will be here. You can see it right here. This is the audio of that particular scene. All right. And you can see this audio has been placed exactly here at this particular moment because the scene starts from here and ends here. So the audio of this scene also will start from the same point and end at the same point, and it will go underneath the first voiceover that I added. But you can always change positions by dragging this one underneath the other one, or by moving this one, for example, right along with the other one on the same line, or you can actually place them like this together next to each other's, 
One thing you should also know about editing on CapCut is that you have these cutting options, split. And I would not explain these, delete left, delete right. I think they're useful, but only if you're an advanced video editor. You would not really necessarily need them. Also, this selector right here, you would not really need it because you can do that manually. So for example, let's say that from this scene, I don't need the first part. I want to get rid of it from here to here. You can actually select the scene, make sure that your cursor is exactly where you want to cut. And then you can click here on split, or you can click on control B. If you have a Windows computer on Mac, it's going to be a bit different, but it's still a button plus the letter B. And that will split these scenes. It makes them two now. So these are two separate scenes. And I can move this other scene here. I can move this other one here. I can do whatever I want. But I can also take both scenes and I can create what I call, if I attach them, I can select both of them like that and right click to create a compound effect or compound clip. In which case that brings them back together. It glues them back together and transforms them into one scene again, as you can see. Now here, layer number one is this scene. This one is obviously layer number two, but you can always bring this to the top. And as you can see, the cover is empty, but now the video that we see is the one on top of this video. If I bring it downward, now the video that plays is the one on the top. The priority is always given to the video on the top. Other elements that you have to realize about videos and B-roll, not B-roll, and voiceover audio is that you can always control these elements. So for example, let's start with the audio. We have this voiceover right here, right? If you want to edit that, you can click it. Let's just say that you want to reduce the volume or increase the volume. First of all, let's listen to this audio, okay? This into fortunes. You listen to that, right? First of all, you have to make sure always that when this is playing, countless sales these, from creations. in these two elements here, these small elements, you must make sure that the audio is coming from both these. Like this. If, if I play, you can see fortunes. making countless sales. The audio is playing in both earbuds because this tells you that if someone is using a headphone, then they will have no problem listening to the clip or the audio in both sets. But if it shows you that the audio is only coming out of one and not the other, then this tells you that when someone is playing the video, they will not be able to listen to all of it, right? In, in all the, they'll only be able to listen on one earphone. Now the audio, like I said, you can, if you click it on the right hand side, you can control the volume in, decib in, in, in decibels. You can increase it. Notice that I increased it a lot right now. So listen. Into fortunes, making countless sales. All right, so that increased the volume. If I decrease the volume, I can decrease it like this and we can listen again. Into fortunes, making countless sales. From All right, and I can always click on the video and keep modifying the volume as I see fit, up and down, up and down. And you can also modify the volume from here. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay? So, and if, for example, the volume has a lot of loud noises, there is some noise in your volume. Let's say you filmed it outside. You can always click on that audio, reduce the noise by clicking on reduce noise. This is an AI feature, which is going to reduce the noise of your audio. You can also normalize loudness. So if your audio is loud, it will actually tone it down. It will make the loudness go away. It will make it a smooth audio. If you would like to enhance your voice, you can click enhance voice or video, and you can control the intensity of your voice, and that will enhance the quality of your voice. If your audio has music in it, you can use the vocal isolation feature and you can only keep vocal if that's what you're interested with. And on the right hand side, you can see that it is processing in the percentage right there. 
So pretty much, as you can see, there's a lot that you can do. You can also change your voice. So for example, let's say that you want to use a voice changer. You can click right here on voice changers. We have both voice filters as well as voice characters. For example, let's say that you want to sound like a hacker. You can use a voice filter called Deep. If I click, now Sorry let's listen. For turning simple visual products like this into fortunes. And you can always control the pitch, the timber, and this will tone it down. Taking countless sales from creations that customers love. As you can see, you can always remove an effect by going back to original. And this will go back to your original voice. Making countless sales from creations that customers. And if you click right here again, if we go back to the voice filters, there's a lot of voice filters here. If you want to sound like a like you're on a telephone, now this is a pro one, but I'm just going to play it anyways. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this into a fortune? So here we're sounding like we're on a telephone. You can sound as if you are on a megaphone. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this? You can use the tremble. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this? Did you know Hi. Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products? You can use a mic hog. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital echo? Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this? Synth. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this? Low battery. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this? Big house. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital low fee? Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products? Sweet. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this? All right. And there's a lot. And you can always go back to original. You can also change your voice by clicking on voice characters. For example, if you want to sound like a queen, you can click here. Into fortunes. It's loading. So it's loading right now, which means that it's going to have to wait. Let's listen now. This into fortunes, making countless sales from creations that customers love. You can see I changed my voice entirely. I can sound like a chipmunk. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this into fortunes? I can making sound like a trickster. Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this into fortunes, making count... And so on. I can always go back into original. And here we have speech to song, which I never actually used, to be honest with you. And here you can control the speed. So let's say you want to make the voiceover speed up a little. You can either move the needle like this, which is going to speed the audio. It's also going to make it smaller in size. That's understandable. Turning simple visual products like this into fortunes. You can see that that sped it up. And I can speed it up some more. And let's listen right now. Like this into fortunes. Making countless sales from creations that customers love. As you can see, that's sped up twice. And you can also, instead of speeding, up, speeding it up like this, you can decide about the length. So if you control the length, you also control the speed. So if I make this instead of 9.5 and make it 8 seconds, it will speed it up, right? But if I make it 12 Ooh, seconds, it will like slow it down. Into fortune. So if I click right here and I actually make it 20 seconds, it will slow it down so much. It will be very slow. All right, so let me show you. Listen to how slow this will be. Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this into fortunes. As you, as you can see, that's quite slow. All right. And I can always go back to 9.5, which is the basic duration. So I can click here, 9.5, 9.5. And that's it. Right. And as you can see, that's pretty much good. Up until now now pretty much the things that we've done for a audio we can also do for a video except for we don't have access to the voice changer and we don't have access to other things as well so for example this one here because we removed the audio from it we don't have access to the audio inside of it all right uh, but we can scale the scene making it bigger smaller bigger smaller like that we can play with it you can also scale it by taking it from here and then scaling it from the screen back and forth you can position it wherever you want um, and here you have these uniform scale which you can use if you're interested with I prefer to use manual uh, you can add motion blur to the picture if you want to add some blur if you want to blend 
a picture with, or a video with another one, then you can actually use that. You can remove a background. So for example, if you have a video with yourself and there is a background, you can actually use the uh, custom background removal or the chroma key to remove a background off a of video. Uh, you can use a mask or the mask also can help you out in basically putting yourself in the middle of a heart or in the middle of a rectangle or a circle. You can retouch by adding some filters. So if I enable the retouch right here, these are some filters that I can add. So for this, I will need the scene that I appeared in. So let me go ahead and grab a scene in which I appear. So for instance, here's a scene in which I actually appear and I can drag it right here just to showcase. I'm going to drag it here. I just want to showcase to you that you can actually edit this. You can, you can retouch the face, you can retouch elements. And also one other thing, if you would like to scale this to edit in at ease, you can actually grab from here and then make it bigger so that you can reduce the size of the import side and you can focus a little bit more on the screen. And you can also do the same thing from here, right? You can scale this up and down like that. And you can also do the same thing from here, right? So you can pretty much do all of those things if you're interested with making each of these bigger, depending on your screen. But if you have a big screen, it's going to be good. Now here, I can retouch. So pretty much I can even, I can add a smoothness to the picture, the video, I can add smile lines, uh, I can add bright eye, I can add dark cycles, brighten white teeth, I can whiten my teeth, uh, I can add a tone, for instance, add a degree of warmth, and so on and so forth. So these are just some retouching features that you can use. Uh, and then there's also other elements such as speed. You can make the video faster uh, because this video here has audio. I didn't extract it from it. I can also access its audio and I can basically in increase or, uh, the audio, uh, audio volume. I can do a bunch of things that we explained earlier. So they're pretty much the same as you can see. And then I can basically, now tracking is not interesting to me. Animation is not interesting for B-roll because I'm not going to add animation to a B-roll. But I would like to explain to you uh, animation later. Now let's just take it step by step. Adjustments are also a very interesting feature which can enable you to adjust your video, your your the colors in your video. If you click on adjustments, you can see right here that we have access to a temp or add temperature, add a tint, saturation, we can add exposure, more contrast. And you can see as I'm doing this, the video is changing in real time. And so by the way, if I wanna make, if I wanna change the color of what I'm wearing, I can change it by controlling the hue, right? And I can also do that by going to the HSL. And here in the HSL, I can actually pick a color. So the color of the shirt, I believe is this one. So if I click that, I can actually change that. Right, I can change the tint and you can see that that changes the color of what I'm wearing. It also changes the color of the background entirely. So as you can see, that's also a pretty good editing trick that you can do. And also here, you, you get access to adjustments also on the left-hand side, except for this is not attached. This is custom adjustments. So it doesn't have to be attached to a specific video. You can use it, drag it, or by clicking here and drag a custom adjustment like so. And once you place that custom adjustment, you can also edit the effects on that particular custom adjustment, and you can spread it across any scene that you so desire. Okay, so if I click on this custom adjustment here, I can also add temp, tint, saturation, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, I can actually spread it as, as, as long as I want to cover, cover as long or as many scenes as I want. So now if I spread it like this, if I spread it from the beginning, for example, if I take this custom adjustment and spread it from the beginning to the end, this will actually make my job easier because it will just apply one filter to the entire videos. If I actually move it backwards, it will actually only apply it up until this point, okay? And not from here to here. You can also save it as preset if you wanna save it. And you also have to live inside of the video. So for example here, let me just remove this let me remove this, remove this one. And let me take that scene here, go to video. Uh, I'm gonna remove it as well. I'm actually gonna remove everything. I'm gonna go to my import 
And then I'm going to drag this scene. And I'm going to also drag the voiceover that goes along with that particular scene. You can see that the voiceover is much smaller, which means that I'm going to have to take this particular scene right here, go to the speed option, and I'm going to have to speed it up to a maximum, right? Which basically makes it a lot smaller, so that I'm going to have to reduce it slightly. And you can see that right now, our scene is now as big as the voiceover, and I can still control it like this. Like this, as you can see. And as you can see right now, the scene matches the voiceover length, like that. And you have to listen to the video. So if, I, if we listen to the video... Did you know Etsy sellers are turning simple digital products like this into fortunes? The moment I say fortunes, I'm going to stop. And I have this effect, it's a sound effect, that I can drag it. It's a cash register. And when I drag that cash register, you can see right now, it is over here. I can just lower the volume of it slightly. And now if I play this, listen. Making countless... The moment I said fortunes... Fortune. Making that went with it, which is good, but it's not the best because I can add a, a sticker like a money bag that also starts the moment the audio starts. So I can go to stickers right here and I can particularly pick a sticker that I can animate. So I can go and look for money in the stickers. There is money. And if I search for money, you'll be able to see that there's a lot of money stickers. Some of them are animated. So for example, if you like this one, this is an animated sticker, you can drag it here. And you can actually control how much you want it to show in the footage. It doesn't have to be huge, but if you'd like to animate it, it has to be for, it has to have a specific size. And I can actually make this a little bit bigger, position it in the center and click on animation here. And I can pretty much go to animation and add a bounce in animation like this and basically go to out and add a bounce out animation. From and if I play from, from scratch, to forge, making countless sales from creation, you can see that that actually looks pretty good. All right. So pretty much this is it for this complete tutorial regarding CapCut. One of the things that I have to check with you before going is that you have, you also have an option to control the aspect ratio of your video. But since we're creating large video here, 16 by nine is good. If you want to transform it to a TikTok size, click on 9 by 16. That will automatically make it 9 by 16. But then again, you will have to make sure you edit this accordingly. You, you can scale. You can take a video and uh, pretty much scale it to fit the entirety. Uh, or just keep it like this. And you can always go back and forth between sizes of the video, right? Like that. So by controlling the aspect ratio. And you can also take an audio recording of yourself. In case you don't want to go and take an audio recording separately, you can use this audio recording and you can take an audio recording. Now there's other features as well, which we're going to explain. So let's go ahead and make sure that we explain them along the way before we can be ready to get started editing. Uh, but hopefully we're going to do, or we're going to share with you pretty much all the necessary elements and the key elements for editing so that you can be ready. Stay tuned for the next video.